watching at home, you're with Adelaide Eternal. I'm Sarvan McClinton. I'm in the booth here with Jackson the McCall Pierce. G'day, guys. We are bringing you a special feature match today for our Legacy uh, Challenge. And we have Beckett Wolf on the right of the match playing Connor Dalton on the left. Beckett Wolf is, of course, one of our team members who's often in the commentary booth. And today uh, he's been replaced by Jackson the McCall Pierce who has been taking his catchphrase too. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I figured it was uh, the best time to steal it considering he's on camera, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I really want Beckett to enter an official, uh, a sanctioned a sanctioned major event and name his deck G'day Guys. No, that sounds really good. <laughs> and it would make sense, you know, if he named his vintage deck Oath, you know, G'day Guys, like G'day, <laughs> you know, turn three gristle brand or something. Like, that makes sense. <laughs> well, he is playing the same colors he plays in vintage mm. and he's playing it's basically a bug deck but it's called nick fit for a, a reason we'll go into another time <laughs> sometime during the, the event or the uh, this particular video yeah but there is a crazy interaction here with basic lands basically basically in the format, no one really plays basics, or they play one or two just to kind of get around the occasional wasteland so they can fetch one out and then brainstorm with it and so on. But uh, this deck plays nine of them, and that's because it has Veteran Explorer. So if you can, fa if Veteran Explorer dies, especially on turn one or uh, turn two, uh, you get lands into play untapped, which is awesome, and what better way to do that than with a card that allows you to sacrifice a veteran explorer and that's cabal therapy so on turn two you either have a veteran explorer already out or you deploy on that turn then you cast cabal therapy and you name let's say brainstorm because they're tapped out you maybe whiff on it but sometimes you hit and then you sacrifice veteran explorer and you hit the thing you actually want to hit and then you get two lands and they're able to deploy uh what, what can you boy deploy green sun zenith for uh uh death right shaman i don't know i'm just just making up things that you can do with the mana because what happens with a deck is eventually you get to six mana and you play grave titan <laughs> <laughs> or your green sun zenith for titania and yeah. it's it's this really weird deck that just should not work in legacy but it does have you seen this in action before yeah no i i've seen a little bit of nick fit but there's definitely a lot of spice in this one like um yeah, three Jaces, like three yeah. Pernicious D. Yeah, four like, Pernicious D in the whole deck. Is yeah, it in the seventy-five. Like that's I, ridiculous. Yeah, it, he's he's deeded me multiple times with this, and Delver players do not like getting deeded. No, it, it kills everything. Indeed, yeah. they don't. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's switch over to Connor Dalton's deck. He is on a Sneak and Show. So this is a Sneak and Show with Omniscient. So sometimes it's called Omni Show as well. Uh, if you haven't played it before, it's really... Uh, it's it's kind of this strange blend of linear deck and versatile deck. So it's linear in that uh, on turn one you can play an Ancient Tomb and a Lotus Petal and then play Show and Tell and then put out a Grizzlebrand and then draw seven cards and etc. etc. Uh, or you can... Uh, slowly but surely ponder and brainstorm your way through to ensure that you have exactly the right cobbling together of cards. Cast your combo piece, which is a sneak attack, say, putting in an Emrakul or show and tell putting in Emrakul or Omniscience and then casting Emrakul. And then you have, uh, you know, Fluster Storm and Force of Will to protect that, mm, that yeah. land. So it's quite, it's quite robust in that respect. Uh, aspect but it's also versatile in the way that you play your sideboard so i've seen sideboards with blood moon so you become this kind of lock deck i've seen sideboards with three young pyromancer so you become this uh <laughs> deck where they've taken out all their removal <laughs> and then you just play a young pyro and you just cast some ponders and brainstorms yeah that seems really scary so yeah it's a pretty cool deck if you haven't tried this one before i highly recommend you sleeve it up it is Probably one of the decks that I would recommend to uh, beginner and intermediate uh, legacy players because it has a really direct game plan, but you also get to learn all the intricacies of Brainstorm and all the other aspects. Whereas if you say start with Burn, then you don't get to learn about Brainstorm. You don't get to learn about all those cool sequencing things. Yeah, for sure. No, it's it's definitely a really powerful deck. I mean, like, 
I have seen the turn one Emrakul before, and that's, <laughs> it's never a pleasant feeling to be staring down that. No, no, no spaghetti monsters here. We might see whether or not there is a spaghetti monster on the battlefield this game because we're going to go down to the match, and the players have shuffled and they're rolling. Becker is on two. Ah, uh, he pointed, so I assume that means they went odds evens, and two was Connor, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so I see okay. thought sees bunch of lands glare wall of glare. Okay. Thought C seems good. Yeah, I mean, turn one swamp thought C's and then your opponent doesn't actually know what you're on. Yeah. And you get to know exactly what they're on does shape your decisions. Okay, so, uh, so this is Emrakul, on... Show and Tell. Um, is there a force of will there? I'm not I sure. Quite see. I, okay, I, Connor's starting off. I think people uh, think that seeing seven cards and naming them to the audience is something you can do the same way that you look at your hand and go, snap, mull, snap, keep. Yeah. It's... it's, it's, it's Quite difficult because by the time we start listing out three cards, the can's gone away and I can't remember what they were. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It'll be a mystery, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Right, yeah. So we've got volcanic islands. So... so if this is fetching a response, I mean, this could be a brainstorm hide yep. the best thing. And, you know, you can do things like hide Emrakul and show and tell on top and yeah. then just play out your lands and then play the, that if you know your opponent's not on Force of Will. Okay, we've got brainstorm. Yep, so this will be the that, that play just hiding hiding the cards uh there's there's also sneaky things you can do here by if you have a big threat two threats you put say the top card of the deck is say uh grizzlebrand and then you keep the emrakul in hand yeah they take the emrakul with the thought seeds because they think oh well, now i've denied you this but it actually was the thing you wanted to do which was shuffle your deck and so you shuffle after Ooh, your brainstorm yeah that's, uh, that's a pretty that's an interesting play sneaky Ooh, thing. force yeah. of will okay so maybe he was just brainstorming to get the force yeah Maybe he had the force, but pitching. he didn't have a. He didn't know what blue card to pitch. Okay, so that cunning wish was in the hand. I remember okay. seeing that. Uh, so cunning wishes. Uh, the wish wish package is something that some of these decks also play, and it's a nice way to fetch a win con from the sideboard when you've got omniscience out. And sometimes that win con is release the ants, and basically your opponent. Uh, each time you cast it, more ants go in their pants, and by the end of the game, <laughs> they've just been their 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 pants are just mono ants. Okay. That could make some for some pretty entertaining coverage. You know. Did you say entertaining? Or? It, oh, I should have. Okay. Oh, that's a missed opportunity. Oh, you could have grabbed that joke. That's yeah. It. Oh, <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> so this is a preordain uh, active. Well, active fetch doesn't really matter when it's preordained because it's scry. Mm. But he did scry to the top and bottom. Was it? Uh, I think he definitely put one of them on top. Mm. Oh, he's fetching. Surely not. So... Maybe, maybe he didn't. Maybe it was both on the bottom. Maybe you you confidently say two on top to you know yeah. psych them out, <laughs> psych them out and then you just you're shuffle fetch. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ris- risky in a stifle format. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so he's he's fetching and he's this is I mean people don't fetch end of turn very much at all in legacy because unless they're used to modern. Yeah. But that one could have been because his hand was full of lands and he didn't want to draw any more mana sources. That's possible. Yeah, that's that well could be. Okay, so what do we got here? Is that... All right, this is a show and tell yep. with the correct art on it, which I like. Yep. And then we have a response from Beckett with Brainstorm. So he's probably trying to find Force of Will yep. because I think that's the only only instant speed stack interaction he has in the main deck right yeah i think so yeah so the rest is all cabal therapies and stuff which you can do in the on his turn if the explorers finds a way to kill the explorer jam jace bounce him (laughs) yeah uh, these are these are definitely things Uh, i don't know seems a little clunky but you know you gotta do what you gotta do yeah this or you, you... real okay so he runs the one leovold so now he's definitely afraid because Connor forced his thought seize, so he knows that he's got the combo in hand, right? Yeah. He's protecting the combo. So he has Force of Will in hand, as we can see on the far right of Beckett's hand. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure what they were discussing before, but it's possible that they were kind of, he was kind of uh, communicating how he has to force this, but yeah. lose a powerful card or something like yep. that. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Force Pitching Jace, I think. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Yep. Jace, Jace is, is often very hard to resolve effectively. Yeah. Um, in in a uh, where he has to use all of his mana. Oh, he is Ooh, a veteran, veteran explorer. explorer. Proxied like, veteran out, explorer. Is it or is it a beautiful miscut? Uh, you know those. You know when they have the the sheets and there's. Oh, I have to tell you about this intentional miscut. 
uh, not intentional miscut, this amazing miscut that Socrates has okay. of Counterspell. Yep. It's just the corner that says Counterspell and the oh. rest is a blank card. <laughs> oh, dear. And it's legal, right? Because it's a... Uh, well, here we go. So this is a show and tell. Show and tell. All right, so... Hmm. It's always a bit scary. Yep. That's, that's real scary. That's the big one. Okay, that's he's the got a Phyrexian Tower. So Phyrexian Tower. Tower allows him to generate heaps of mana next turn. Okay, so... So this is a fetch... Okay, so he just wanted right. to get rid of the Dried Arbor, which was the third card, the second card put back from Brainstorm. Okay. So, because he does not want to draw that now. So what's his out? His out is Jace. Grave Titan, sacrifice some perm- sacrifice some uh, some other permanence. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we're going, we're, we're really reaching, but we yep. can try and find them. Yeah, Grave Titan, um, hard cast, because you're going to Phyrexian Tower away the the little one one guy yep and then you're going to cast a grave titan it makes two dudes sacrifice some dudes in a couple of lands next turn and then the grave titan attacks for in enough lethal in two turns too slow for emrakul yeah. right yeah either way he's generating double black off this yep and uh interestingly of all the decks that uh sneak and show uh, not sneak and show that nick fit can line up against Lining up against Sneak and Show is actually really bad because Sneak and Show has heaps of basics. Yeah. So his veteran explorers are not one-sided like they normally are. Yeah, okay, so this is five mana. Six mana. Is it Grave Titan? We'll uh, find out. That's exactly six mana. Oh, Green, Green Suns. Suns for five. Okay. Get Titania. Okay. Return to fetch land. This actually might be lethal because he... No, because to the Annihilator, he sacrifices Dried Arbor, which makes a 5-3. Oh, yeah, so he he makes a 5-3 off the Misty Rainforest. He has 10 power. When Connor attacks, he sacrifices all of his lands, which makes an army of 5-3s. And he swings back for like 40. That's pretty spicy. <laughs> so that Connor can't attack. super spicy. Who would have thought Titania is like <laughs> secret tech against Emrakul attacking? Oh, man. Ooh. This is great. Oh, he's got... If he's reading it, it means he's not going to get got by this. Oh, no. <laughs> he's like, hang on. So what do you, you do now? You sacrifice six lands. <laughs> what do you do now? You can't attack with the Emrakul. This is great. Oh, my goodness. That's so then, ridiculous. Yeah. So end of turn, Beckett gets to make a 5-3. A okay. Well, I guess he doesn't no need to even need to make a 5-3. He just wants to keep it for Brainstorm. Okay. So... Yeah, yeah there's pro. a land in hand. He's got two cards in That's hand. Unbelievable. Titania. I'm so thought. I'm so glad that this is on camera because I, that's when, when your opponent taps for six. Oh, okay, Grave Titan. When they're <laughs> Nick Fit, not uh, Green Sun Zenith for Titania. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this is hilarious that yeah. Emrakul is afraid to attack. It just can't attack. It it would have made for such a funny moment if he did attack. <laughs> just these <laughs> army <laughs> of these random 5-3 fellas. Oh my goodness. Oh. That's ridiculous. So yeah, he's actually finding the... Uh, getting a token at the end of turn. Yeah. Because now he can actually well, he needs start to... attacking, I guess. Do you... He attack with Dry Arbor, right? It's a free roll. Yeah, or you can sack block it for two. Like, oh. like he did. Oh. Sacrifice Dry Arbor. If he can make one more two, token, then... Then it's lethal. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. This is this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. Yeah, that's such that's such a bizarre out to Emrakul. So what you so, so attack what's, with? So two? what's Connor's out here? Um, no, show and tell Grizzle Brand. Oh, no. okay. Uh, deeds. Deeds doesn't do much right no, now. Doesn't really do anything. Not. So either sure. either way, so. Beckett attacks here, right? You attack uh, you attack with two five fives. He blocks one five five, takes five, goes to eight, and it yeah. presents lethal the next turn. Yeah. No, not, not lethal the next uh, turn, sorry. I don't know. It's not okay, lethal. So we've got My bad. Ponder. Okay. Um Yeah, Ponder is huge here. I'm wondering it's, um, it's the race to Ponder who can find who can find cards. The yeah. specific cards they need. I wonder what Connor's sort of out to this bizarre situation is. I mean, he, he does have Cunning Wish, so that gives him lots of options there. Um, mm. His out I is... I don't know, honestly. No, Beckett, Bristlebrand? Beckett not, casts... Not even. Beckett casts a Cataxian Probe for its alternate cost of two life. Goes to 15. Yep. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not going to happen, Ooh, but that would be, that's definitely yeah. a, a sneaky little out. Okay. For, force Beckett to use two Force Ooh. of Wills. 
two life. Ooh, okay. This two life is big, but cunning I guess wish it's is intervals huge. Intervals of five, right? So yeah. it doesn't matter. When he when he does his cunning wish, though, he can find echoing truth. Ooh, that's that's pretty good against tokens. Uh, he could sack it with Phyrexian in response to avoid. No, that no. Name. What he does is he attacks with Emrakul. Ah, oh. uh, annihilator trigger happens. He makes all the tokens. Then he then he oh, fla- then echoing he truth it. the token. Okay, but if he right. kept the Phyrexian tower, he could sack it in response and get rid of the naming trigger. Or is that? Oh yeah, maybe you can. I'm is not that sure. How it works? I think so because if you remove it, then the spell fizzles. Yeah. So. So then the rest of them don't get yeah. bounced. It's, like, it's target. Yeah, it's like target creature, and then bounce everything yeah. with the same name as this. This is crazy. Back is just a fetch land away from pretty yeah. much sealing the game. That's it. This is really interesting. Jace bounce. That would be nice. I've been saying that a lot this Jace game. Bounce. If in doubt, Jace bounce. Just Jace bounce. Imagine if you Jace bounce and then Connor untaps, plays Omniscience, cast Emrakul with has <laughs> oh, great Grave Titan. Titan. <laughs> Yeah, that helps. Yeah, that so this helps. is lethal next turn. That's yep. what he's saying. He's, yep. he's just going, I've got lethal next turn. Yeah. Seems pretty good. That's a lot of tokens. <laughs> and then the random pernicious deed. Uh, yeah. Um, this is... I, I can't think of the top deck that Connor wipe needs. Away? No. no uh, well, no, 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 the top no. deck is Cunning Wish for Wipe Away. Yeah. Right? Okay. But... Even wipe what? It's too late now. It's too yeah. late. It's done its job. Wow! I can't believe show and tell into Emrakul against Nick Fit. You <laughs> think that yeah. would be a death <laughs> sentence, right? Oh, that's oh, another that's two. So good. Wow, that's a lot of permanence, Beckett. Strong. Far out. <laughs> you know, I said good day, guys. That's that's a lot of guys. It's like good good goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, spaghetti monster. That was yeah, wow. not how I thought this game was going to turn no. out when Connor slammed that Emrakul. That's, yeah, that's crazy. The Emrakul got slammed. There you go. So secret tech against, you know, if your meta is full of sneak and show, you're just <laughs> going to start jamming those titanium. You just got to start jamming <laughs> six mana and uh, <laughs> green sun center. Six mana green sun. some green that's, ritual, dark rituals. Right? That is green craziness. Rituals. Okay, so Connor bringing in... Obviously not Blood Moon because it really isn't that great when your opponent plays nine basics. Yeah. Um, but he I, he does have um, he does have. Did you go Flusterstorm to get rid of, to get around? Um, you know, early hand removal like Thought Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like it's, that it's, exciting, but he he definitely brings in Echoing Truth because yep. there are cards that he can't answer. Right. Anytime there's a card you can't answer. Bring an echoing truth. Yeah, right? you, you like, wouldn't leave it in for cunning wish. Oh yeah, sorry, wishboard. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, you just leave it in. Does he just run it back? Like what? It, what is there in this mm, deck? Maybe pyroblast for this four. Is, this is the sideboard. I don't know. Oh yeah, double pyroblast. That's what yeah. he brings so in. Pyroblast. Um, Kozilek's return doesn't do anything because because no. he wants to his creatures to die. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, and we can already see Beckett here sliding over a bunch of cards. He's mm. slid away. Three pernicious deeds and a thrag tusker out, and then he brought in what was, the, what was that flash Beckett? What was he flashing in? Okay, triple duress, and then one card that we couldn't quite see. So double blood moon coming in. Oh, this is where Connor doesn't realise yeah. that he's against the deck that yeah. has the nine the basics. basics. Yeah. yeah, blood moon's and, definitely not. And yet. this is an advantage of Nick Fit, right? Yep. it's an under the radar deck. It's it's like a tier two deck. That performs well, but not well enough for anyone to really memorize a deck list. Yeah, and then you just you just get wrecked by Veteran Explorer. <laughs> I, I swear, like Nick Fit just seems like one of those decks that people play because they have a really uh, healthy EDH collection, <laughs> and they just want to play. They want to join in with the Legacy guys on Legacy Night, right? Yeah, and that like, doesn't really matter what fatty you play. Yeah, it's like it's, find your EDH deck, put in a couple of fatties. Those yeah. are the things you're going to ramp into. I've seen all sorts of things come out of Nick Fit. It's just such a zany, interesting deck. It looks like a lot of fun. Oh yeah. So the for those at home, I'm not sure whether or not they know the story behind Nick Fit, but in short. Someone, someone posted the deck list for this deck. Obviously, make either creating a primer or with the intent to get some feedback on their deck. And they in- indicated, or someone else made a comment, indicated that the the deck list was a nice fit. <laughs> and uh, obviously, typos are rife online, <coughs> and they missed the e. 
So <laughs> Nick Fit was born because it became a meme. Oh, the, 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 the entire name of this deck is a meme. What is like? There's just something about legacy and funky names, like <laughs> like all the all the storm decks, all the yeah. Cephalid Breakfast and Cheerios, yeah. and that all, all of those decks are named after cereals. For some, I don't know why. Yeah, someone at the beginning just went, "I'm going to call this deck a cereal." My favorite brand of cereal, and then after that, everyone just continued the trend. Yeah, all storm decks are cereals. It's just zany. Found out recently, Check Pile uh, actually the the first. Like iteration of Czech piles actually made in the Czech Republic, yeah. which I thought was interesting. Yeah. So it was like that name actually means something compared to a lot of other <laughs> legacy decks. Like, isn't it like Maverick was named after like a cowboy film or something? Because <laughs> Dead, Dead Guy of... Ale was named after the Pecula team oh and how they goodness. drank Dead Guy Ale. Oh. They drank that beer whilst they're creating that deck, and it was called Dead the Guy Ale. It's bizarre, isn't it? This is this. Welcome to Legacy. If you haven't if you haven't played Legacy, welcome to the format of ridiculous names if you're going to create a deck please make the name ridiculous yeah. because it will stick no names change no matter how much you want to call it four color leovold it will <laughs> always be check pile it doesn't matter how much you try and push it <laughs> yeah it's great it's just makes it you know nice and difficult for new players yeah, to enter the format right. i guess it's really but, hostile to yeah. new players yeah. when they, if they don't know what deck to play and they're like i don't know why this is called this yeah it's a bit unusual all right, so here we go. Island. Grave Titan. What, what, can, can show your That's hand a bit longer, Beckett. Uh, Beckett knows the drill. I reckon that was a... Beckett you, has no excuse. Beckett has no excuse. Zero excuse. You know the drill. Yeah. We need to we need to name the cards in your hand. I just want to say good day to your hand, Beckett. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. We got... This is a multi six for Connor, and it's volcanic on a lead. On okay. Lead. So and got, this is... But this is a way better opening, right? Yeah. Mis, miscut... Uh, veteran explorer off Misty Rainforest. Then he goes... Ready to go Cabal Therapy next turn. Right? By, if he's playing Bayou, it means Cabal Therapy next turn, right? Next turn, he goes Jit Probe, Therapy, Therapy, Sack. <laughs> oh, I just imagine. Uh, off the Malta 6. Oh. It would be painful. I would not want to be on Connor's side no. there. However, Connor has a Ponder, which is extremely good here because he's going to be able to sculpt himself for a turn 3. Yep. If he just you know, finds a land or finds the land that he needs, then his turn three is going to be the scariest possible thing. Yeah. Oh, serving up one damage. Oh. Second one. All the basics. All, all the miscut. Okay. And then we have... There, who we go? We've got three mana. We've got four Ooh. mana. Okay. This is okay. this is either a sneak attack or it's a show and tell with fluster backup. Show and tell. All right. So Beckett has Titanium. Oh, Titanium. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is where show and tell backfires when you oh, play against a deck dear. that's a nice fit for the format. <laughs> oh, dear. So what, uh, Beckett? <laughs> with can... an active fetch land. Like, oh. Beckett was actually actively thinking, if you play show and tell, I'm going to be able to put this in and have a fetch land ready oh. to go. Oh dear. So what do you do? Yeah. Jit probe. Yeah. So I guess the life link is is pretty bad right now. Yeah. So he's got another show well, Intuition sneak. is actually really oh, strong here, right? Sorry. So he can he can uh, threaten to next turn cast intuition and get three cunning wishes. Okay. Yeah. And then it gives him like a deterministic line to to uh, find a win. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's got Grizzlebrand, and the Grizzle Father will. Will draw him, <laughs> draw him seven cards anytime he needs it. Oh dear, yeah. So, yeah, just with that life link. Um, so what? The most Beckett could swing back with is what seventeen, which is yeah. pretty good, really. Yeah, I love, I love this serve up for two. Yeah, because Con Connor's like, I want to block, Therapy? draw oh, seven, serious. gain, okay. you know, gain seven. So what do you take intuition? You take intuition. Yeah. Uh, intuition's amazing here. Yeah, uh, the sneak attack has done its damage uh, the um, show and tell did the damage so the sneak attack is now not relevant because yep. the grizzle father is out grizzle father <laughs> the fa father of uh, father seven seven <laughs> the grizzle dad yeah oh that's a lot of cards we that's did what grizzle brand does i guess i think in a previous match we had referred to because grizzle grizzle dad's there and yep. Emumra Cool became the other ones. So the, the two, oh, the two parents of the deck, oh, right, kind of policing your, sending your opponents to the naughty corner. <laughs> this is a brainstorm. Uh, 
okay. Yeah, like uh, that, that feeling when you draw seven and you go, it's not enough. I'll just brainstorm, brainstorm and draw, some draw more. three. <laughs> the Put greed you there. is real. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, so... It's a, hmm. I, I assume that... You know, it's actually... If he swings for seven here just and goes to 16, careful. he dies. On yeah, I was going to say, he, he does <laughs> it's die. It's the 17th so. hour. <laughs> So what? Oh, so you, he can't you attack with Gristle Brand and show and tell another Gristle Brand. <laughs> the vig- the old three mana blue spell that gives target Grizzle Brand Blood vigilance. Oh, you want to respond to that, Beckett? Yeah, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Seems good. Yeah, fetch two basics, right? Yep. And Absolutely then the two veteran do. explorers get two basics as well. Yeah. Right? So yeah, the Blood Moon bit of funky. Oh. oh yeah, and he gets Dried Arbor, which also is a one-one mountain, which gets to bash in. Okay. And yeah. All right. And will it. not be blocked because it will become a 5-3. <laughs> That's interesting. The Underground Sea is interesting. What do you think the logic is behind that? I think maybe he's he's just all in on the fact that he's not going to cast anything in the game that's going to be relevant to Grizzlebrand. So eventually he's, he's going to hinge on his, uh, his Veteran Explorers dying and he gets his basics. I don't know. Okay, it's interesting uh, because I, sure. I can't see why you wouldn't pick a basic land there but maybe oh maybe he's just like well you know one basic land doesn't do anything for me so so just don't do the don't do anything and then Hmm. then hinge on the the explorers i don't know i'm not sure yeah it's interesting so this is a ponder and it was all keep on top so that means that there's probably some kind of interaction piece whether it's a counter magic to stop something nasty happening or a second show and tell to put something big in next turn that mm. finishes the game. Okay, so. But he does have sneak attack. So Emrakul is a thing. Yep. That actually, be... it's not a thing, sorry. All the lands get sacked and make five threes. Yeah. It, Emrakul actually makes Beckett's life easier because it sacks <laughs> two, two of the explorers who Dora the Explorer their way into four basic lands. Okay. And then three of the other lands, which become five threes. Do you, so. <laughs> do you think this is the beginning? Like, if Show and Tell becomes tier one, do you reckon just jamming four Titanias in the board? Do you reckon that's, I, that's I, the sweet tech? I think if, if Show and Tell becomes the, the deck to beat, it's suddenly the whole format is a nice fit. Yeah. And everyone is nice on this deck. Nice fit for Titania, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So... Let's see what happens. Okay. So, Beckett's definitely assessing his options here. Okay, so he's got the Dryad ready to go and the other tokens. Okay, he's just swinging in. This is interesting. So, I guess All you, swing. what, you, you block the OG Titania with the Gristle? Um, yeah, I guess so. Kill that. So, take, huh. take... It's such a take a lot, isn't it? It is go a to, lot. You go to 14, but you 14. end up taking 13. You go to 1? 13, yeah. Correct. That's wow. interesting. So, all right. So, Con is dead Seems next strong. turn. I think he... Oh, I don't yeah, know what he race, does. So you attack, the race is real, isn't it? Yeah. You attack with Gristle. Draw 7. Show and tell Omni Emrakul. Yeah, that's your only out. Because yeah. you're going to lose anyway, right? Yeah, you're, you're gonna just going to gonna go dudes. for it. And so, Beckett yeah. will have like... What's up? And then you present lethal the next turn, right? So bash seven. Mm. Ba- bash seven. He's just going to die next turn. Yeah, but uh, I mean like bash seven and then draw a bunch of cards and then... Oh no, sorry. It's not a format with time walk. I keep, time I keep walk. thinking, I keep thinking, you know... Oh, just that's right. Stuck in vintage. Time walk. <laughs> no, no time walk, thankfully. <laughs> that would be a little uh, format warping, I think. Yeah. You could give... Um, you could cunning wish and... and uh, Put some ants in the pants. Oh, yeah. yeah no, release the ants. Is that a sorcery or instant? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I honestly can't remember. I mean... It is, it's an instant, right? Because you, you wish for it. Ants move pretty slowly. You think it would be a sorcery. Yeah. Okay, we go. Oh, wow. Okay. That's... Um, okay. Yeah, that's... He puts he puts in enough, enough dudes on the battlefield because he puts in 10 power off Grave Titan, which then attacks the next turn. So he's actually attacking for 23 next turn. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And That's the, crazy. obviously the two biggest get blocked. Yep. So the, a six and a five get blocked. So he's attacking for a uh, 20, uh, uh, six and a five get blocked. Yeah, so he's attacking for a 12. Yep. But 
uh, gain seven life, so he goes to eight. So yeah, it's lethal. Wow, hmm. the show and tell got there. Interesting. Uh, the show and tell didn't get there because because of just fat dudes. Wow. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that match. That's only round three. We've got more delicious action coming to you. Going to the top tables for rounds four and five. Thank you for watching, everyone. Should be fun.